Ready to roll, guys, as this should be a good one. Kai P, they just came out of the series with friends. I didn't really watch what the end result was, but um, last I checked, it was 1 1, and uh, you know, late in the game, having fun. But uh, we'll see if Kai P can uh, continue that dominance over Elements Pro Gaming because I believe the last three times they've faced off, every single time Kai P won the matchup. So, um, you know, Elements Pro Gaming, they are the ones who have something to show here. Um, so, yeah, we'll see. Alright, we'll see Elements Pro Gaming, Conquer and Shadow Demon being removed as, you know, very two very high tier support heroes, both of them can do a lot of work. We have seen Kai P not necessarily like overly run these, they are more about those like fancy heroes like Mirana being put in a support position, perhaps Sand King has been played by Sexy Bambo as well. Um, his Conquer is pretty is, has been pretty good lately though, so... I guess, you know, they can fear that Shadow Demon is just a very common position fire hero. Kaipi, they do run heroes uh, combos like Luna with Bone 7 and whatever, so they are not afraid of running some Shadow Demon as well. Kaipi, they ban out VOD, which is, I wouldn't say necessarily like a huge ban. It's, it's just a very popular hero right now, so people don't tend to like playing against it. Um, because it can do so much work. Uh, it's just a very, very frustrating hero to play against. Bad Runner gets removed as well. Um, one of Elements Pro Gaming's more played heroes. Um, obviously, the Kuhn also plays Bad Rat a lot from Kai P, but they decide that when they don't have the first pick, they will not be they will not um, let the Bad Rat go to Elements Pro Gaming, and we'll see what Elements Pro Gaming will do. As Kai P, they're very Ranger. common of running stuff like Mirana, so yeah, Drow Ranger gets picked up by Elements Pro Gaming, looking for that early game push strategy, perhaps. And Kai P, they should follow up with like a support hero plus Mirana, most likely, as. Uh, Mirana could be both a deny pick as well as just a hero that that Kai P is very comfortable running with. They can run in a support position. They can run it by Sing Sing, which is the the common way they do it. Uh, we'll see though how they decide to approach this game. Mirana will be picked up first, and let's see what follows it up. Maybe something like the Ella Titan by Bambo. Sand King could be a good follow up as well. Um, as like I said, they have run the Sand King both as a support as an as well as an off laner. So it doesn't show much if you pick Sand King. Sand King. And there we go. So uh, Mirana Sand King opening. I like that. It feels like Kai P. They kind of getting getting the kind of draft they want to at least for the first two picks. Um, they are in control of the draft. Whereas Element Pro Gaming, you know, they picked up the Draw Ranger. So this is like round zero. You have a draw. You want to do something aggressive with your lineup. You want to be able to take early towers. Um, some teams do push the Drow into mid lane position where you can get like a safe lane carry who can scale further into the game. But most times you see a Drow, you know it's going to be some kind of early like 15 to 20 minute focused lineup. Um, and we'll see what they do to, you know, approach the final picks in this draft. As we have seen Milan, um, either I would say he's looking for the Invoker pick up this game or maybe he could fall back onto a greedy hero like the Alchemist. Also here he's very comfortable running and something Elements Pro Gaming have a lot of success when they do run that Alchemist in the mid lane position. Um, let's see. So far, second hero, so against Mirana plus Sand King, a lot of stuns from these two heroes, a lot of magical burst damage, so considering the, you know, the new hero that has been more and more popular, maybe we could see some fancy Omni Knight pickups later in the draft, but so far, it is a Darkseer. Um, also very aggressive offlaner, you can get a lot of the offlane, you can get that early mech timing and put a lot of pressure on Kaipi's lanes and I like this. I actually like that Darkseer pick a lot because the thing when you pick a Sand King is that most of the time you want the Sand King to be in the lane and in order to enable him in a lane, especially when he's against a Drow, you need a dual lane. So, so this is kind of Elements Pro Gaming saying if you commit a trail lane to the Darkseer, he will just be able to jungle and get a good amount of farm anyways. And if you commit a dual lane for him, then he will most likely get a lot of farm. So. Elements Pro Gaming, they kind of at least secure themselves one lane that will go decently. Um, and the Oracle gets banned out by Kai P actually, as uh, obviously that would have been banned by Elements Pro Gaming if not. The Broodmother gets removed as well. Um, something a lot of players tend to like banning against a Drow. It's not, some, it's not like the Brood has been picked a lot lately, but, you know, teams are experimenting a lot and... In the old days, Brute was one of those heroes that, okay, you have a lot of single target heroes, 
Um, you have a lineup that wants to group up together. Okay, we can pick Brood and just disrupt your 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 whole team. We can j take away your farm in the jungle, etc., etc. So it's a it's a logical ban for that purpose. Um, the Medusa gets banned up by Kaipi as well. Maybe looking for some melee calls, uh, potentially. Also, just a good hero in the mid lane. Uh, very hard to uh, shut down the Medusa as a mid lane, especially with the precision aura on top of it. And this hero would kind of suit the idea I was talking about earlier that the Drow could just be like a position 2 Not enabling insane. hero and then you have like a big boy core as the, as the other one which could be the Medusa. Kaipi they pick up the Naga Sari now though so uh, that's most likely going to be a core Naga so we'll see some uh... oh, actually I don't really know uh, I expect it to be a core Naga so bonus 7 on the Naga Siren they will just try and Split push their way to victory, you know, Drow Ranger lineup, they want to be the ones putting a lot of pressure as a five-man unit and the Naka will just say, okay, we'll just uh, go for the slow siege, just push out the waves, get our good Radiance timing and when the Radiance is up then suddenly the Drow Ranger lineup becomes a lot harder to deal with. And uh, I think with the first two picks, a Naga Siren actually makes a lot of sense because um, with the four heroes that they have to enable the Naga, they will be able to do a lot of magical burst damage, they have good blink initiators, um, they can leap in with the Mirana, the arrow can always enable a kill or two with the, with the Mirana as well, so they have a lot of ways to create space for the Naga Siren, while the Naga just, you know, does his thing, farm up, get a good Radiance timing, and then just destroy the elements lineup by split pushing them to death. The ET got removed by Elements Pro Gaming as well, a decent uh, follow-up support. Um, with whatever Kai P were actually looking for, they had didn't really have any supports shown so far. Um, any of the two first heroes could be in a support position, the Naga could also be, so... Kai P, they are, like I said earlier, they're still keeping their draft rather open, and they can take this into multiple directions, but I imagine that the three first heroes will all be core heroes. Maybe the Sand King is the one hero they can play around with, but the two other heroes should definitely be, co be caused from the way that I see the draft right now. Um, they can have the Sand King as a support and pick up an axe against the Dazzle though. That could be one way to kind of, you know, shit on the Dazzle pick a little bit. The A gets picked up, expecting a Huskar maybe? Or just, you know, well, I like it. Dazzle, it, it's good against a Dazzle, it's good against a Darkseid because the Darkseid will most likely get a mechanism early. And the fourth pick, if you don't pick the A, would most likely be either the, either the Alchemist or the Huskar. Um, and for both cases, you know, the A is going to be flawlessly good. So, they they just, they just overall um, pick a hero that can work against most of the things that Elements Pro Gaming could be looking to pick up. Um, they will most likely pick neither of these two heroes. Maybe they will fall back onto the Invoker pick now. Um, Oka Magi so far, so they pick up the secondary support hero. Very tanky, doesn't care too much about the AE. Um, can sustain a lot of damage as well, and it fits pretty well into the overall draft, so far at least. Um, you know, Bloodlust and Draw Ranger makes them a lot stronger. And they just need that final here in the mid lane. I imagine the Invoker will be banned out by Kai P most likely. Unless they want to worry about the Alchemist, but with the A already being picked up, I don't think they worry too much about a Huskar or an Alchemist. So, so the Invoker seems like a more logical ban. Viper gets removed. Alright, so maybe they expected that Elements Pro Gaming could be just looking to win the lanes. And then pick a Viper in the mid lane, you know, hard here to deal with, especially with Position Aura. And Elements Pro Gaming? Um, hmm... Like I said, the Sankin could still be support hero, so they would either expect a support or an offlaner. I would still say that the Axe ban or the Axe pick for Kai P would make a lot of sense. Because the Sankin can do a lot of work together with the AA in the support position. Um, Barrow Strike into, well, into uh, uh, Cold Feet is a good combo. Oh, Chilling Touch can do a lot of work as well. They actually ban up the Sven, so they maybe think that Sing Sing is going to play the Marana, then... Naka will be a support. Could also happen. And snare into cold feet is also a decent combo, like I said, but I I still I still bank more that Kai P may be thinking about picking an offlaner now and uh, give the Kuhn a an axe instead of the Sand King. He is very uh, he is very comfortable with the Sand King, Slark. but it just it just feels like the axe could do so much work this game. And now a Slark pickup, so that's interesting. So mid lane Drow and safe lane Slug. Hmm. 
I'm not sure how much I like this though. I mean, it's good against the Marana. It's very hard for the Marana to get uh, a latch on the Slark. Once the Slark has a Shadow Blade, you can get that pounce onto the Marana, which is always very, very nice. Um, it's very good at killing the AE as well. You know, whenever you find the AE around the map, it's it's a very simple, easy kill. So for that purpose, it's fine. But in a team fight situation, like Epicenters, Double Star Storm, um, AA Blast, it's a little bit difficult for the Slark to handle. So I'm not so sure about the pick in general. Like it doesn't feel like it helps with the pushing power either. Um, as Slark is a very weak sieging hero, he obviously he can he can push waves decently, but he doesn't really have the ability to actually do damage to towers. Um, and his roast potential is pretty weak as well, so I don't know. It's an okay pick if they can if they can work out that snowball factor and get him to snowball with the early shadow blade, then it's okay. But apart from that, I, I feel like this is maybe this is maybe a little bit too weak. Like I would have liked the Invoker pick up a lot more. I think that could do a lot more work. I think the only the only downside with the Invoker would be that it's maybe a little bit hard to deal with the Naga Siren as an Invoker, perhaps. All right, let's see Kaipi. Final pick, 20 seconds to go, and yeah. Hmm. Gyrocopter. Gyrocopter, okay. So it will in the end be the Naga support. All right, so Sing Sing on the Mirana, Naga Siren as a support, and the Coon will be playing the Sand King. And they pick another hero up for Mr. Bone Seven. Hmm. That's rather interesting. So they decided to just pick a team fight lineup in the end. Um Sing Sing is pretty much the only hero that scales like per like a lot into the late game since he can farm a lot with the Marana. Um and apart from that, you know, Jaro Coupler, he's an amazing fighter early on with a call down into Ice Blast, into whatever, like they can set up with the song as well. So that team fight early on is actually rather scary from the side of Kai P. And that seems like that's what they're banking on. They just want to take the fight to elements, shut down the Draw Ranger before he even starts getting big. And then, you know, Slark or no Slark, it makes sense because the Slark pick is, is a hero that, okay, the Slark is, you know, he's known for dumpstering lineups that rely on split pushing because. Um, if you group up, uh, if you group up as five, the slug has a very hard time doing anything against you. But if you just focus on split pushing, then it becomes a lot easier for the slug because he can just focus on picking off the support heroes or whatnot in the in around the map. And that feels like what elements pro gaming were trying to force uh, into Kai P because if the Nagasan was indeed a core hero, then the other four heroes would have to constantly walk or uh, move around together to just dodge out the slug. But with this lineup, with a gyrocopter as a safe flame carry, then they can easily just go as a five-man death ball unit and you know push together, fight together, and that's a very hard time to be a slug. You don't deal too well with death balls when you're slug. You sure you know shadow blade is great, but if they have sentries, you you have a very difficult time to get into the fights. So it's going to be hard. And Kaipi then made a little smoke rotation. They tried to make. A move in, try and find a pick off. Sadly, did not happen. Top lane, we do have Bone Seven moving in, trying to snatch the rune. He actually gets the rune as well, so both runes will be secured by Kai P. And it costs them absolutely nothing as Bone Seven will just move into the top lane. We do have Sing Sing in the mid lane right now. Fluff, he may give him a helping hand just for a couple of hits, but no, he's moving into the top lane instantly. And bottom lane, we have Sexy Bamboo on the Naka with the Coon on the Sand King, so. Obviously, that's plus one support to help the Sand King in the first couple of levels, especially against a Dazzle plus Ogre. This is a rather difficult lane for both of these heroes, as obviously the Naga Sun is pretty tanky. He has a decent amount of HP. He leveled up his Riptide so he can do some damage to these heroes as well. But apart from that, it's, it's, it's a very hard matchup. You can see uh, between the healing, the Shadow Wave, as well as just the Ogres hitting plus Ignite, they can zone away these two heroes very easily. Alright, the Kuni's be a little bit careful as if they landed that pounce that could have been, been that could have been a little bit dangerous, but the Kuni have gotten most of the first wave of experience as only a little part of it was denied. He got a couple of lasses as well, so overall it's not the worst situation in the world. The Naga just denies himself and then just, you know, stacks this camp maybe. No, just just an instant deny, goes back to the lane, and the Kuhn will receive his help in a little while again. As so far he's not really having the greatest time of his life as this is this is a hard lane. 
And mid lane, we do have Sing Sing up against the Drow Ranger so far. The Drow is sitting on the same amount of flashes as the Marana, and with those Frost Arrows, he's doing a lot of harassment to Sing Sing as Drow in a one on one situation is actually a very scary hero because, you know, it's it, it can do so much damage. It, it out damages most heroes due to his position aura, and if you have some Frost Arrows on top of that, you just get that slow, which ma makes you able to get a couple more hits than you would normally. And you can see Sing Sing, his attack range is just not able to deal with the draw right now so the draw is putting a lot of pressure onto Sing Sing and meanwhile top lane Mitch on the darks here he's getting ra a pretty free lane it is a ranged hero in the lane but it's a dual lane so the darks he will get a lot of farm regardless he's getting free levels as well he's almost level 4 so everything is working out fairly well for the side of Elements Pro Gaming whereas Kai P you know the mid lane is fine the safe lane is okay um, he's falling a little bit behind. Also in the mid lane, they're also falling a slightly behind. So they need to be able to catch up as they get levels. They need to be able to find some kind of openings to get kills. And it looks like mid lane is the place they're looking to do that. However, the Naka Siren is level 1, so there's no net available. So they just have to pretty much just brute force go in and just right click him to death. He's going in, and yeah, he's just doing some harassment. Gets a couple of hits off. Maybe they... Okay, they're actually going pretty deep. But uh, Sing Sing, he was like, this is not happening, my friend, and uh, Sexy Bambo decided to back up. They could have maybe, like, maybe gone for that if he, like, if he, like, uh, what's it called, if he leaped forward into an arrow, but, like I said, it's very deep. You, you know, you're level 1 on your Nagathone diving under a tower, so that's maybe a little bit too much to ask for in the end. Bottom lane, six Bambo may be a little bit in danger as he gets found stop. He's taking a lot of damage. The Shadow Bear has already been used. They need one more hit and they will get it as Milan will throw the first blood onto the Naga Siren in the bottom lane. So nice little movement there. As uh, that is the third time this game that the Naga drops down. Obviously, the first two ones were just a nice, but Sexy Bambo will feed the first blood to Elements Pro Gaming as they will find a way to get that kill. Sand King in the bottom lane will also just deny himself as he's trying to finish up this stack, but. Of all, this lane is not really working out wonders for the side of Kai P as Bambo has been rotating around on the map. He tried to help the Mirana in the mid lane a little bit, but it hasn't done too much as the Mirana is still behind. And now the Yoga Magic comes in with an Invis Rune, so maybe they can try and be a little bit aggressive onto Sing Sing. They cannot force out a leap so far though, so it's, it's all about forcing out that leap. They will stun him up. Nice leap rotation from the Sing Sing as he gets that leap instantly, spotting out that Ignite, and uh, yeah, he will be fine. He probably wasn't going to die either way because like unless they stunned him like the second he used leap and if they stun him like mid-air so he stopped the leap like one centimeter in front of him maybe he could have died but that's 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 it's not it's not something you can actually aim for because you can't time it like the second he presses his leap he's already like far gone um, compared to LeBron's timing on his fire blast so it's just something you can maybe hope for at best and obviously it didn't happen but they do scare him away they do do some damage to him as well as he just has to back himself up to the base he will back up and uh, he will be back in the lane the Drow is leading the charge in the mid lane though he has a decent amount of denies he has the most lastage the slark is out farming the gyro as well a little bit and the doxy has doubled the lastage of the sand king so laning wise elements pro gaming they did pick lanes that were supposed to win with like Dazzler, Ogre as a support duo, Darkseid in the off lane, and they're doing that job right now. They're winning the lanes, so it's just about what can Kaipi do once they get their level 6 on the Jaro, which they have now. They have the cooldown available now. They just need the ultimate available on the other heroes, and then maybe they can try and make some fancy movements around the map and try and get kills. Sexy Bamba in the bottom lane needs to be a little bit careful as this Dazzler is doing a lot of damage to this boy. As a Ooh, almost. Oh, swift ending. Maybe able to get it. Oh, just out of range to be able to get that damage with the dark pack. And Sexy Bambo, he's just healing up with that cell. We do have swift ending going for his own healing as well. As now they will continue fighting up. We do have the Mirana ultimate coming out though. Just trying to set up for that kill onto swift ending. They will not be able to get it though. As Sexy Bambo was a little bit too far away. And he's only level 4, so it's kind of limited how much damage he can actually do onto this slot. And in the end, that will just be a... Zero for zero, nothing happens. 
see how the levels are going. The ogre is sitting on level 3, we do have Fluff on level 2, not really having the greatest time of his life, and the Dazzle is a whole level 5, so this guy is having a good amount of levels on. The Dazzle just pulling a lot, being involved in the first blood, and yeah. We'll see how Elements Pro Gaming decides to just push this into maybe the first tower. I imagine they will just lane until they have the mechanism on the Darkseid though. Maybe they will group, like, maybe they will rotate someone into the mid lane to help the Drow secure the mid tower. They can, like, ro rotate the bottom people into the mid lane with the Dazzle as well as the Ogre and Slark. And they can get the mid tower very fast and they can rotate into the bottom lane and get that tower as a 4 man unit while they just let the Darkseid farm top. That could be one way to just secure themselves a good amount of farm early on, but they don't really have to force too much. As uh, right now, they know they're winning the lanes, they know they're farming well on every single call, so they don't have to push it too much. Alright, take the with the mid lane, maybe in trouble again, as he's taking a lot of damage. He will be fire blasted up by LeBron Dota and. That will be a kill. There's an arrow flying out as a brand. Or maybe a little bit in danger. He may be dying in the end. He can try and deny himself. Let's see if he gets the deny off. Oh, one more hit. No, he's not going to be anywhere near Creep Wave. And he will just be taken down. As that will be a one for one trade. But the trade is actually going to the side of Kai P. As uh, obviously Sexy Bamboo is not worth too much right now. So um, a good kill on the Ogre there. Bottom lane will be pressured by the Slug as well as the Dazzle. Meanwhile, as the, the Sand King moved into the top area. Just trying to secure that kill on the Ogre. And we also had the A plus the Sing Sing Smirana just sitting in the mid area, so we are feeling pretty comfortable going for this push. They may be able to even take the tower before Sexy Bamboo can do anything about it, as it's a Naga, you know, it's a Naga level 3, he's not too scary on level 1 Riptide, so they should be able to secure this tower. Looks like that will be the case, so the first tower of the game will go to the side of Elements Pro Gaming, and the Drow Ranger will most likely start the work on his own tower in the mid lane. And the Kunas rotated into the jungle. He's probably just uh, trying to secure himself that he gets a decent timing on his blink because so far he didn't really have the greatest harm in the world. Um, he's level 6, he finally picked up his epicenter. He goes for some raindrops now as well, so he may be just TPing down to the bottom lane and help his team. But as this is happening, Sexy Bambo, he's the one a little bit in trouble. He does dodge out that ignite nicely using his uh, mirror image, but apart from that, let's see. As the Kunas trying to get an initiation, he does go for the bar strike, doesn't hit onto LeBron Dota, and Bone 7 rotated down to the bottom lane, trying to set up for this fight, but sadly they did not get that initial stun they needed to set up for the cooldown, and it looks like Elements Pro Gaming, they'll just be able to ditch themselves out of here. Mitch is just farming on happily ever after in the top lane, the Slark is jungling a little bit right now, and yeah. A nice rotation falls out by Bone 7 though, as he's, he's already 1000 gold behind of the Slark, so forcing out rotations on him like that that doesn't give them anything, is pretty big because Kaipi they 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 rely a lot on this gyrocopter duty to do a lot of work early on because if you pick a gyrocopter in a situation like this you want the cooldown to have an effect you want this gyro's early game power with that cooldown into rocket uh, barrage to do a lot of work and so far it's done nothing they they haven't gotten any kills with him uh, and it's 10 minutes into the game so you know the clock is ticking the items are coming online from elements pro gaming as the Dragonlance will soon be completed by the Drow. He almost has enough gold to complete it with the Aquila as well. The Slark has his Shadow Amulet, so he's probably just going to be very passive jungling until he has his Shadow Blade. And the, the bottom main will be given to someone like the Dazzle, maybe to get some more items. He already has his Arcane, so he's a pretty happy support hero. The Brown Dota's level 4, so he may be the one rotating down to the bottom main eventually to get his level 6 at a decent timing. But apart from that, you know. It's just about farm, farm, farm. Sexy Bambo is in the top lane right now. He's the one leeching the experience as he's level 5. He wants to get his Song of the Siren available as well. Fluff is level 5 as well. Almost level 6. So once that Ice Blast is online, they can do some more work. Hold on, gets used in the mid lane. Just buying some time for Sing Sing. But apart from that, it doesn't really help too much. Sentry on Sentry action in the mid lane. That's always, uh, always a treat.
right, the T1 tower in the mid lane did get denied by the side of Kai P, so they don't give that unnecessary amount of gold away to the enemy team, but the tower is still down, and uh, now Elements Pro Gaming, they've already sent the slug up to the top lane just to get the last bit of farm on that Shadow Amulet, and I imagine once he has the Shadow Blade coming online, maybe they just rotate a couple of heroes to the top lane and they get the last T1 tower taken down, as they can rotate the Drow as well as the Darkseer up top, and... That should be pretty easy to claim that tower. The Darkseer almost has this mechanism as well, so it is about that time where they're ready to group up and just go as a five-man unit. Um, Shadowblade on light, uh, Shadowblade online. The Drow has enough gold to buy something like the Dragon Lance. They have the Shadowblade on the Slark mechanism on the Darkseer. You know, everything is is up and ready. Even an urn can be purchased very soon on the Dazzle, so he can get his own amount of sustain for the team. And that five-man death ball will be pretty difficult to deal with as Kai P right now I feel like um, they have ultimates soon like Fluff just got his level 6 sexy bamboo is still not level 6 himself and yeah you know everything else is working out fa fairly slow the Sand King's blink timing is 800 gold away so it will take him a little while it will probably be around maybe like 15 16 minutes if he just keeps on farming decently without dying right now maybe he can boost it by half a minute or a minute if he gets a good kill in the in, in the next like two minutes time but apart from that it's it's, it's a pretty it's pretty straightforward that elements pro gaming they are in the lead and kai p they need to just try and find kills and maybe they do just that as bottom lane mid maybe it'll get in danger cooldown gets used mechanism has been used until grave will be used on ice ice that's will hit on to mid and mid will be taken down as the grave ends so that's one good kill nice pounce to dodge oh bone seven Almost magical, but just not quite there. So maybe now they can set up onto the slug. A nice arrow into the face of the slug, and they will be able to bring him down. So they use the first song of the siren from Sexy Bamboo, and they get a very, very big kill. Sing Sing is going pretty deep, trying to get a kill onto the Dazzle. Maybe they can actually get a turnaround kill as Sing Sing is dropping very low, and the angry LeBron Dota on this Ogre will just go in and say hello. One kill, hello, two kills. As Fluff and stuff doesn't have enough mana to TP away, he may be able to deny himself, but that's pretty much the extent of his abilities right now. Ignite comes out, and it looks like this guy will be taken down. Heal comes out from the Dazzle, and these two heroes just got two more kills than they should have. Like, the, the Gyrocopter dying was actually very unfortunate, because the last tower hit um, got him killed. It was a very good uh, use of the Song of the Siren from the Naka, though. Almost uh, almost saving Bone 7. They got the kill on the Slark, but then they got a little bit too cocky and ended up losing both Sing Sing as well as Fluff on the Mer on the Ancient Operation, which actually makes it worth it for Elements, because that's a 3 for 2 trade. Um, it should have been just a 2 for 1 trade, like the Bone 7 Jaro for the Slark plus the... plus the Slark, but... They, they, they did a little bit too much there. Now we have the Slark in the mid lane with that Iron Shell. With the Shadow Blade as well onto Bone 7. And this is a pretty disgusting kill that they should be able to get. He's going deep for it, but he will get it. And now we do have the Coon going in. Missing the Barrow Strike onto the Slark. And Bone 7 got taken down. Maybe the Coon now will be a little bit in trouble. He gets silenced up and he will indeed be taken down. As the Ice Blast comes out, will hit down to Swift Ending. But I'm not too sure they have anything to follow up. So they will not be able to take him down far enough to actually get a kill on him. And that's two kills to the Slark. As the Snowball is definitely happening right now. As he's now in the position where with the Bloodlust as well as an Iron uh, iron Shield. And then just his Shadow Blade himself. He can go around and solo kill people like the Gyrocopter from Bone 7. And he can't really do too much about it. As you saw, he shut his call down down, and that was pretty much all he can do to in order to survive. He has a good amount of early stats with the Dragonlance, but just not enough to actually survive. And the Slark will move on closer to get that Echo Saber as well. And it's not like this Snowball will ever stop. So if he's a problem already um, to, hear, to your safe lane carry like this, he can just solo kill your safe lane carry like that. I'm pretty sure it's 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 about time that Kai P they just continue this five man push. They have the blink on the Sand King, so they have the initiation power. They just need those ultimates to be back on off cooldown. The song is available in a couple of seconds. And you know, five man death ball down bottom, get a tower, and just try and get some backup farm because they picked this Jaro to in order to go for a five man push, so they need to go as a unit. They cannot just, you know, chill and split push the map and just get a farm on all heroes because then the shadow blade slug will just move around and get solo kills so they have they kind of have they're kind of forced to go for this five man um style usually you would see probably just four people pushing and then the last one farms like ancients or something like that but it's just too risky at this point they know that they can't afford losing people more than they have already done so they have to just 
get what they can with the five heroes they are. Oh, the Sand King maybe a little bit in danger here as the flag is still moving around. They get a nice bar turn on the front of the Ogre Magi. The ultimate gets squeezed by the Marana's water is giving them that space and the front will be taken down so the Ogre Magi will die. Marana ultimate get used for that. A nice rotation. They won't exactly get the gold from the tower in the bottom lane, which is a little bit unfortunate, but they do save the top tower. They will be able to deny, deny that. I believe it is in deny range, if they want to. Um, and they get a kill on the Ogre. Not the best kill in the world, but it's 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 better than nothing. And they are a little bit behind right now. Elements are sitting on a 7.5k net worth lead, so anything that Kaibi gets right now will just be great. It, it's, it's going to be grand. Alright, and now we have the epicenter coming out. Onto the throw, he does get hit by that, uh, by that cold snap, what's it called? Do I even know the name? By the Ice Blast as well. But in the end, the Drow got himself out of that with that Shadow Blade usage. And the Kuhn actually borrowed himself a little bit too far away. If he was right on top of him with that Epicenter, he would have done enough burst damage. Like, he would have gotten, gotten at least two more waves of damage onto the Drow. And then maybe, I think, he would have died. But he borrowed, like, through him. So he ended up being here. And, the dra like, he was here and the Drow was here. And then, you know, he could just walk this way, and then suddenly he only takes damage from one single wave of that epicenter, and, you know, it was a good initiation, but sadly, a nice little sidestep by Gok will, will secure himself that he doesn't die. Very interesting, he went for the Shadow Blade as the first item, though. I guess, I guess he just had so much gold, you know, suddenly he just sat on 3,000 gold, and he was like, okay, I'll buy a Shadow Blade, because they don't really have the money for detection, so if we force him to buy more detection, that's going to be pretty, pretty useful. As uh, the Kai P supports, they are already fairly poor, so forcing them to buy more sentries and dust and whatnot is fairly annoying. And the Shadow Blade is a nice item on the Drow either way. You know, he can set up with he can set up for kills with the Gust. Um, he can get soul pickoffs on heroes like the E if he just Shadow Blades and just finds a, any kind of opening on him. So I don't mind it in this game. Um, the only like weird part about it is that he went for it before the Dragonlance and he's actually continuing to finish the Silver Edge before finishing the Dragonlance, which is a little bit uncommon, but I guess it's it's okay. Alright, bottle main Ice Blast used, Dust used as well. They don't find the latch onto uh, LeBron Dota's Ogre, so he will just happily just uh, wiggle himself back towards the tower. Sing Sing has his Aconim Setter completed now, so that is a pretty good, uh, pretty good item to have. On the side of Kai P obviously will maximize a lot of that damage. The Gyrocopter has enough gold to pretty much go for something like the Yasha, I imagine will be the next pickup, like a Manta style early on in this game, just so you can take away the silence from the Dry Ranger perhaps. And apart from that, the Dazzler has a Glimmer Kick. The Ogre Magic is the one who went for the urn for the team, so they do have one urn available as well. The Darks here is sitting on the mech and almost enough gold to go for the Blink. He just sold his Stout Shield and okay, he actually buys a Hood. So he's just going for the... He doesn't care about the initiation this game pretty much. It's just all about keeping his team alive and it makes sense honestly because they don't have... They, they will never have better Blink initiation on the side of Elements with just the Darks here having a Blink. So it, it makes more sense just... Uh, making sure you can survive the actual fight. Um, so instead of trying to like out out initiate Kai P with like a Blink Sand King with the uh, Mirana with a leap who will get a Blink eventually, the Gyro Cup was very fast here and they're just you know trying to survive the team swift ending. It's a little bit in trouble here. He's dropping very very low and he will be taken down here as the double star some with the epicenter will get the kill with a cold blast from the ancient operation and they're not trying to chase on more as elements they already did pretty much all they could to save the slug but it didn't really work out, and now if they lose more heroes, that could be big. A nice power strike onto Milan. The arrow comes out, hits onto Milan as well, but now the Drowning is coming in, trying to do some damage onto Bone 7. He will take down Bone 7. Milan gets that grave on himself, and now Sing Sing needs to be the one getting out of here. As he goes for the leap, goes for the TP, but no, it gets cancelled. As that vacuum will be right in his face, and Sing Sing will seemingly be taken down here. The inv invis invisibility does take in though from his ultimate and he's just walking the other way trying to just get himself out of there. But he's in a little bit of a tough spot as the invis will now run out. Before he passes through this creep wave, they will see him and he just has to go through the river. And I imagine he will be chased, but he does have a leave available in one second. He actually leaps onto the high ground, so he's expecting that they want to try and continue try um, finding him to get the kill. And he's just, you know, sitting up on the high ground just uh, having fun. Maybe the Dazzle knows this though. Or well, if he walks close enough, the Starsum will actually hit him. Ooh. That, could, that was a little bit scary. Oh, 
no, sing sing. Oh no! No! This is horrible, no! Not like this! Oh, that's unfortunate, man. <laughs> God goes right down the towards the river as as Sing Sing thought the, the the road was clear. He leaped down and then right in front of him is a little drow ranger who just says, "Hey, free kill." Very unfortunate timing right there. Either way, let's see. As Element Pro Gaming, they will not go for the Roshan as the Marana stopped for 30 seconds. The epicenter is still down for a little bit, even though it's only a very small amount of time. The song just got used. I'm not sure where, but it did get used, and yeah. That should be a pretty easy Roshan for all of them, as obviously you can see it drops on very quickly. The Ice Blast will scout them out, but I'm not sure this can do too much work as the Sand King is moving. He may be trying to go for an Epicenter here. Goes in for the power strike. He will. Ooh. Beautiful attempt by set the Sand King trying to pick up that Aegis, but in the end, Swift Ending does pick it up, so uh, they will not lose the Aegis, they will not lose the Roshan, and they will get a kill onto the Sand King now on top of that. So Elements Pro Gaming, they are pretty happy about how things are going. The Slark has its Echo Save at 2000 gold. With that Shadow Blade, the Drowinger has the Silver as well as a Maelstrom. So he's not even deciding to go for that uh, Dragonlance this game. He rather wants to go for maybe something like the Silver, like Maelstrom, and then follow that up with an Aghanim Scepter so he can do some damage to Illusions. And just pretty much just that up. Uh, so he doesn't really feel like he cares about how f far his range goes with his attack. The Doxie has the completed pipe as well for his team, so mech plus pipe, this is this is scary. A very, very scary push right now as the tier 3 tower will be assaulted. It's taking a lot of damage, arrow will not be hitting onto anything, and now we do have Bone 7 moving down to towards his team. We do have a song available very soon from the Naga Sun, 60 seconds to go, and that's pretty much what they're waiting for. If they can just hold this high ground until the song is available, they can use the song to set up a nice fight, but this is not going to happen as Swift Ending goes in, gets a jump onto Bone 7. Bone 7 is taking so much damage as Swift Ending does get stunned up. Bone 7 will be alive for now, but now the coup in the front lines, he's all done and he's used every single spell he had in his arsenal. He will be taken down by Gog. One on the draw, and that is one dead inside of Kai P. Now they go in further. Flop will be will be jumped on. Sexy Bamba will be pounced up by the slug. Will be taken down. Now Bone 7 moves back in. He's slowed up by Gog on that draw end. And just so much damage flying out with those frost arrows. And Bone 7 will be taken down. He was not able to do anything about that barrage of just that sheer damage from Gog 1. And that will be a GG call from Kai P as the game is over, the Rax is lost, the fight is over, and yeah, Kaipi trying to go for this teamfight lineup with that Gyrocoder, but like I said, they didn't really do anything in the early game, they didn't get anything done the second the Gyro was level 6. They tried to make one good move in the bottom lane where they TP the Gyrocoder into the lane, but it was just a little bit too late as Elements Pro Gaming, they read the initiation, they disengaged, they didn't lose anyone, and... Elements Pro Gaming, they picked a lineup that won multiple lanes. They had a good lane mid with the Drow Ranger versus the Marana. The top lane with the Darkseid in a, in, a, in a dual lane. Obviously, he got a lot of farm. And the Sand King Naga Sound lane didn't really seem that dangerous. Um, I'm, like, it's not a lane that they could win because Naga plus Sand King versus Ogre Dazzle Slark is a very